Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Algebra 1 test. And if you're going for this particular certification, congratulations. This is a fantastic course to teach and tremendously important in your students' lives, your future students. But of course, you got to get past taking this test, which is not going to be as easy as some of you may think. Okay, you really need another material. Well, how do I know this? Because I myself am a math teacher in middle school, high school, even taught some college, and I have taken the Praxis exams for these respective grade levels, and they're challenging. And, you know, yes, I have a degree in mathematics, not math education, an actual degree in mathematics, a master's degree, and you have to study for these exams. They're professional exams. So, um, you know, welcome to this video. I'm glad that you found me uh, because I want to emphasize three important things that you need to be thinking about for this particular exam. Now, before we get going, um, I just want to let you know that if you like my teaching style, I actually have a very comprehensive uh, Praxis Algebra 1 uh, prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out. But with, um, with that being said, let's get into these study tips you need to be thinking about for this exam. All right, so the first one is that some of the questions are going to be multiple choice. Not, not all of them, but some of them, okay, uh, should be multiple choice. So if you come across a situation, I'm just going to make something up here. Let's say 4x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0. And you're given a, b, c. And you get x is equal to this, is x is equal to that, and x is equal to something else. Of course, there would be two solutions here. Let's say 1, 3, 0, 5, negative 2, 7, whatever the case might be. Remember that very often it's... Uh, you know, it's a better strategy to use the solutions to equations to select your answer instead of just saying, oh, I see this particular problem. I know how to solve it and I'm going to go off and solve it and, you know, I'm going to be great about it. Then I'm going to select my solution. Remember, when you're given multiple choice um, options, use those to your advantage. All right. Use the uh, solutions because generally the, the, the solutions or the questions built is designed for you to, to be looking at the solutions and, and at least use some elimination there because speed yes of course let me just kind of back up here yes you want to be a real you need to know algebra one have the true mastery of it to teach it however your goal your objective on this particular exam is to pass okay it is to pass to accumulate as many points as possible Okay, now how you go about doing it is all fair as long as you're not, you know, doing anything that you're not supposed to be doing, which I'm sure that would be the case, but any tactic or strategy for you to get the right answer in the in the least period of time is the way you need to go into the right attitude for this test. Okay, it's not like hey, I know algebra one so well I'm gonna do every single question to my best of my ability that I'm gonna select the answer. And you gotta be intelligent, right? So just like the SAT or ACT you know, that are multiple choice exams or a lot of other exams that are multiple choice, you you want to uh, think about the exam or the question format and be like, okay, how am I going to approach this? Okay, because you really do want to save your time. Now, another thing that you, you got to be careful of, and by the way, too, I know I'm speaking to uh, you yourself or studying for this. I'm speaking to a professional, somebody who's you know, likely have a college degree, you know, so um, um, don't want to be patronizing in any manner, but I do want to emphasize things again uh, about test taking, right? You, you got to have a strategy for it. And I know you've taken a lot of tests, you know, uh, in your past, but you, for this particular test, you need to know the exam format and be very, very focused on how you're going to approach each question. What type of question is this and how am I going to approach it? So anyways, be on the lookout for that and particular strategies that go along with multiple choice type questions. Okay, so the next thing here is there's also numeric entry um, format questions. So that's a different deal, right? So basically, hey, let's get rid of all of this. Now it's more like type in the answer. Okay, <laughs> so type in the answer. Well, again, unless you're going to guess, this is where you actually do need to approach the question and you got to know what you're doing. So this allows me, this, this particular point allows me to stress my overarching 
point to all of this and that is you have to have a command of algebra one you got to know your stuff if you're going to teach it you got to know your stuff okay so if you know your stuff then you should be able to be very confident about these numerical uh, entry type questions because other than that you're just going to be guessing all right so prepare give yourself enough time uh, to do what you have to do to you know to go in and um, uh, take this exam with high levels of confidence but that means you're going to have to review all right and the worst thing you could do and I see this a lot with a lot of different type of students that I help um, you know graduate level students you know we're all a human being even though we have degrees or master's degrees and everything else if you've been away from a subject for a while you have to review even myself okay if I'm teaching uh, quadratic equations and I've been teaching it for 20 years guess what if I go in there yes I could teach it completely like with no notes or nothing like that but I do myself the favor of just refreshing make sure I'm going over everything so I don't miss anything and that's what you have to do review okay even if you have a high level of confidence and good strong math skills you got to review okay so find a good program that will allow you to uh, to do that and gives you you know kind of challenge different type of questions um, of course that's what I try to do in my particular prep course but anyways whether it's my course or something else you know spend the time to review so it can handle these numeric crunch, uh, type entry questions with confidence okay the last uh, thing that uh, I want you to think about is you're allowed to use and actually I don't have the, um, the exact details on this but you're you're allowed to use a graphing calculator and this is all you know through my research here so uh, if you're you if you're allowed to use a graphing calculator as you probably know but you may not know graphing calculators are like an outstanding tool then you can do so many things to um, uh, to to solve you know problems let's let's go back to this numeric entry type thing okay this uh, particular question let's say and let's use this equation let's say you didn't know how to do this equation you're like oh boy I forgot or I'm struggling or it's taking too much time well if you're able to use your graphing calculator on this particular question and this is all hypothetical I don't know if this would be the case but let's just suppose it is if we're if you're um, able to use your graphing calculator for this particular equation you could easily and you know this is the way you use a graphing calculator go ahead and graph this you know uh, parabola and let's say it's like this okay and then you can just scroll in and and be like oh here's a solution and here's a solution and then you know you really narrow it down so whatever the, the you know um, graphic calculator they allow you to use you need to know how to use one really really well okay uh, because you can get solutions you can solve a lot of things with the graphing calculator it's a wonderful tool okay now I just don't know um, I'll be very honest with you I don't know the limitations or the specifics of it but, but the bottom line is this if you're able to use a graphing calculator um, you know take advantage of it big time okay well these are my tips here that I want to just kind of stress to you these are more like hey thinking about the test what do you already have going for you you know into this test you have some multiple choice opportunities you know you're gonna to have to know your stuff and you know that you're gonna have an opportunity to have access to a graphing calculator that's that's pretty good there's a lot of tests out there that don't you know there's no graphing calculator some are multiple choice but they don't let you use a calculator or vice versa but you know again you don't want to um, just take this test you don't want to if you're new at praxis test if you haven't taken most of you maybe have taken a praxis core exam to get into your teaching programs or whatnot um, you know you got to treat it with a high level respect just think of it like an SAT or an ACT type of test where you got to put the work in if you really want to do well the worst thing that can happen is you um, take the test and you fail by one point point. and by the way just uh, if I'm recalling correctly the practice exam that I took many years ago I think the failure rate was like 50 percent for the first time out so half the people that took the exam failed it the first time because they really didn't prepare well enough so you you know I don't want you to be that person okay anyways if you enjoyed this video hopefully you'll uh, come back and subscribe and watch more of my videos because I'm posting all the time you know mathematics is my passion um, a lot of videos on my channel that can definitely help you uh, uh, with this particular exam again I'm gonna leave the link to my Praxis Algebra 1 uh, prep course in the, uh, the description of this video 
very comprehensive. Pretty much will teach you everything that you need to know for this exam to really like, you know, do very, very well on it. If you like the exam, I mean, if you like this video, uh, I don't know how many people like exams, but you know, that's not a bad thing. But if you like this video, um, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know where you're coming at. Uh, you know, your background. Hey, are you, you know, do you have a mathematics background? Why do you teach? Why do I want to teach algebra one? You know, why does that interest you? Um, I can tell you right now, for me, uh, teaching algebra one, like the middle school level, it's 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 different. It's challenging. Okay, any teacher will tell you the difference between sixth grade teaching sixth sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, and my experience and a lot of people's experience, there are big differences. The there are different groups of of students. Okay, ninth graders are different than tenth graders and eleventh graders, etc. But the bottom line is this: um, as a teacher. It's a great career. Mathematics is a great subject to teach, and uh, you know it's an extremely important course because if students don't get their algebra one down, they're going to be shaky in algebra. I mean, sorry, shaky in geometry, and they're definitely going to have a hard time in algebra two, algebra two. They're not going to do well on their standardized tests, SATs, and ACTs. So it's a big responsibility. You really want to do whatever you can do to get your students to um, ace algebra one. Well, listen. I definitely wish you all the best on this exam. Thanks for your time, and uh, have a great day.